Monitor reviews for me are a little bit of a hard thing because I want to keep them compact but deliver as much information as possible and that's why I decided to redo this video after all because I had like 30 failed attempts and actually one complete one but it was about 10 minutes long and I want to deliver you that same information in last time so let's try this i don't know the name of this monitor because i just can't remember it and the fun thing is that it's actually my first 4k monitor ever i've used 4k panels in the past but usually on laptops those were glossy and a lot smaller and the overall experience is definitely something completely different here and i would say let's just get into the device review itself and start off with the ergonomics we have swiveled towards both sides way more than enough we have a very generous tilt towards the back not so much towards the front but Usually I use mine straight anyways and it doesn't bother me at all. We also have a pivot mode. Maybe not so interesting for the gamers here, but definitely for people who work a lot with graphics maybe or something like stats and all that. So maybe something nice to have. At least it's cool that we have it. But the really important thing for me after all is the height adjustment, which is very, very nice with 150 millimeters. On the left side here, in terms of ports, we have two USB 3.0 ports. Bottom left, we have two more with the port to connect it actually to the PC. A little bit towards the center, we then have a headphone jack. According to some specs, there should have been a microphone jack. I didn't see that one though. And then we have HDMI and the display port. A little bit more towards the right, then we have the port to connect the power cable. And actually on the other side and the front, you can already see the power button and the rest of the buttons here, which are actually physical buttons, which is quite nice. Something like a joystick is still something I prefer more, but this is definitely better than any capacitive button because it just works. In terms of the menus, I can't really praise it too much because you get pretty standard cost because you get some presets that you can adjust and, and you get the typical amount of settings you can go through and change them. Nothing really spectacular here. One thing that I would have liked to have seen would have been a monitor control software that you can use in Windows, which would be just more convenient. Maybe it is there, but I didn't find it. So just keep that in mind. But I would say since I've covered that, I want to now get to the scaling. And that is after all quite important because this device comes with 150% out of the box, which is, I would say, the compromise that you should take because 100% is just way too small. You have to be so close to it and then you already have to stretch your head to actually look in the corners. 125, I would say, is maybe possible if you have very good eyes and are after all quite near to it, but 150 works out nice. 175 is definitely already way too big, but after all, you will run into a few scaling issues even with 150%, especially if you have a multi-monitor setup like I do and with different resolutions. Because where it works still quite okay on the 1440p panel that I have, it's quite obvious on the 1080p panel that the scaling does something to the overall UI because some elements look right and the ones that don't properly scale look way too big. So just keep that in mind. If you use just this alone, it is mostly fine. You will be like 85% of all the time quite happy. But if you have a multi-monitor setup with different resolutions, Keep that in mind, if it's of course a second 4K monitor, it's pretty much the same and that's what I want to leave it in terms of scaling. Now let's get to the viewing angles. Those, since it is an IPS panel, are absolutely stable. You can move it completely to the left, completely to the right, up and down and things look just right. There is a minimal shift, which is absolutely IPS normal, but this one is absolutely stable. Let's get to the whites. Out of the box, the calibration was way too warm. So what I did was the lazy way. I just used the stock uh, the stock Windows calibration tool and took off a little bit of reds and greens and then things are fine because then the white looked white as it should. In terms of the blacks, it is quite a deep one. The IPS glow is actually absolutely fine in my opinion and there is though a little bit of backlight bleed. As you can see here on the overlay, there are like two or three little bits of dots where it glows out. The corners actually are quite st solid though and not a huge problem. But in normal use, I didn't really mind it so much because if you use maybe or watch a video with black bars, you will notice in a darker environment if you have some light going on in the room it's absolutely no problem and if you play some darker games like doom you will notice it but if it's enough to bother you is something you have to decide personally i i see i've seen it every time i checked for it for the review but the moment since i've used this monitor for about a month now that i've just normally used it it didn't really bother me at all so let's get to the next thing and that would be the colors because those are super super nice and super accurate because after all this monitor has a color spectrum of 100% sRGB and it definitely shows because colors look really nice very very close to my calibrated Dell monitor so that's why I wouldn't trouble of course if you want a really accurate display you 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 should need some colorimeter and get it properly calibrated i did just the quick and easy way which was absolutely more than fine for me already now 
video experience just to cover that real quick if you have 4k content this one looks amazing on this because due to the depth and the sharpness and everything you almost get a 3d like effect which is amazing to see but then there is the thing that 4k content is still not a really common thing here i had to use samples from youtube to get that done here for the video so i could ac actually show you 4k content so it's still not too big for me since i don't have netflix 4k or something like that and i personally wouldn't even watch too many tv shows or movies on a monitor that's what i have my home theater system therefore but if you are someone who is that definitely the experience is great and now let's cover the gaming because it has g-sync support up to 60 frames and i can already say one thing the sites that tell you that this one has g-sync support up to 75 percent are just wrong i asked acer since i tried it and i couldn't get over 60. the moment you try 61 hertz it's a blank screen so you are capped at 64 or at 60 hertz but you have to have a very powerful machine anyways to drive that. I personally with my GTX 970 had no chance of getting that. I had to use medium settings to barely reach something between 30 and sometimes 60 frames per second. So you definitely need some really beefy power here. And then you have to decide what's more important for you. Do you want the snappiest gaming with higher refresh rates or do you want the higher resolution? And therefore maybe a little bit more input lag, which is not a problem for me. I just don't have sensitive enough eyes to see that input lag. I'm just not a good enough gamer for that. And that's why it didn't bother me at all. But after all, the higher resolution taxes on that. So if you maybe play slower games that are more visual impressive, 60 frames and 4K will be a great solution after all. So let's get to the next thing, the conclusion. Let me get out the pros and cons and cover those real quick so I won't forget anything important here. Great ergonomics, absolutely. Only minor line, um, <laughs> only minor light bleed, something you have to decide. Very good overall panel qualities, absolutely. The panel itself can deliver a really astonishing picture. Good controls, not as good maybe as a joystick, but still absolutely fine. A more amazing 4K video experience, absolutely. Great for 4K gaming, G-Sync support, and then four times USB 3.0 along with the headphone jack. Now let's get into the maybe for me sometimes even more so important thing, the cons and possible deal breakers. Visible anti-glare structure, because compared to my Dell, the anti-glare coating here is a little bit more noticeable because we have this kind of crystallized pattern where it diffuses the light. And it's a little bit more obvious here than on my lighter coating. Not a huge problem because if you sit normally, you don't see that pattern, but it makes the display seem a little bit less sharp than it could be. And that's why it maybe doesn't seem so impressive compared to a just 1440p display. So just keep that in mind. The factory calibration, a little bit too warm, something you can get out of the way. No monitor control software would have been a nice goodie, but it's nothing you have to have. Scaling issues. I completely blame Windows 10 for that or you just have to get a bigger monitor and the last thing would be a higher brightness setting that you need. And what I mean by this is that I had to use it at 80% of brightness where I have to use my Dell at 50% of brightness to get them out the same brightness level. And my Dell seems a little bit more vivid, a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more punchier to the eyes in terms of the overall screen. But this could be good or bad because also the Dells therefore are a little bit more fatiguing on the eyes. But I just wanted to have to set that. So let's cover the last thing here that would be value. Priced at around $770 at the moment on Amazon when I checked, the value is definitely there. You get your money's worth because the overall qualities of this moment are great. The minor cons are definitely negligible and you don't really have to bother about them that much. The two maybe important ones would have been the scaling which is windows and the light bleed but that's of course a thing of a panel lottery you can get the perfect panel without any bleed and you can get a way worse one because this one did not bother me at all so overall i can definitely recommend this if you know what you're getting in for because you will have a 4k 60 frames experience and especially for a gamer I guess 1440p with a high refresh rate is still the way to go for, but if you are also using this to maybe edit videos on and watch a lot of movies, then it makes sense if the highest refrains, refresh rates aren't so important for you and then this one is definitely the right for you. That's something that you have to decide and let me actually know in the comments what you prefer. Is it 4K with 60 frames because something higher refresh rate 
it will take a lot of time and a lot more horsepower, which is not quite worth the compromise for me. Or are you more looking into ultra wides or maybe 1440p high refresh rate panels to me to look into in the future? And maybe also from Acer as well. And thanks actually to them for giving me my first actual Acer device ever, not having to go for an online shop and everything else. So that is definitely quite nice. And I've covered it, needed 10 minutes again, so I didn't get it shorter. But I had to give you all the information and that just took a little bit longer. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and leave me any comments like I already said in down below. So have a nice day. Bye.